good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Merry Christmas to you all. If we could just for a moment stand to our feet, and if we could just give God a hand clap of praise, and tell the Lord, thank you. If God has done anything for you this week, tell the Lord, thank you. If he's kept you, if he's given you strength, if he's helped you through some days that you didn't know you would make it, come on, let's just bless the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Come on, join us on Facebook. Put your hands together and let everybody just bless him because we're celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the great I am. God, we bless your name. God, you are worthy of the praise, the honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. We're celebrating He. He is our God. He is our Savior. And if God said anything good for you, come on, somebody. Make some noise in this house. Hey, God. Lord, there's nobody like you in all the earth. Great are you, Lord, and great is this praise. God, we magnify your name. God, we exalt your name. God, we love on you today. With the fruit of our lips, God, we bless you. We adore you. Oh, God, we love on you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, at Restoration, we believe that the reason that Christmas is, it's because Jesus was born of a virgin named Mary and we've come to celebrate him today. We celebrate him every week, but today we're focusing on the fact that this is the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So no better birthday present but to put a praise in the atmosphere and to bless him for what he's done. So wherever you are today, I want you to give God your best praise. I want you to forget about the weights, the cares, the pains, the hurts, the burdens. I want you to do something that's extra. For Christmas, we buy people extra presents. We don't just give them the normal, but how many do something extra? So I want you to give God an extra today. If you normally clap, I need you to clap and holler. If you normally stand, I need you to stand and run. What are you going to give God extra today? Look at your neighbor and say, extra today. Extra. Say, I'm giving them an extra praise. I'm giving them an extra praise. Extra praise. Father, we thank you and we bless you for who you are. We magnify your name and we celebrate the fact that you are our God. That you came down through 40 generations, 40 and two generations. And Lord, through a seed of a woman named Mary. And Lord, you went to the cross for us. We're so glad that you came to this earth, took off your robe of glory. And Father, right now, we bless your name in this house. Father, right now, we adore your name in this house. We invite you in. Let your will be done in this place. God, heal in this house. Deliver in this house. Set free in this house. Break chains in this house, God. Mend broken hearts in this house. Give healing to the grieving in this house. God, we surrender this atmosphere to you. We surrender this time to you. That your will be done in this place. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Do I have any saints that are glad about it this morning? Pastor said we ought to give God an extra praise. So that means we got to give God a little bit more than what we already give him. So if you could do me a favor, inconvenience yourself. Move around in your seat and give God a praise that you don't normally give. Come on, somebody put your hands together. Somebody give God a wave offering. Somebody lift your voice and sing unto the Lord a new song. The song of praise that's in your heart. Somebody give God a brand new praise. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Lord, we lift you high. High in all the earth. Come on, saints. We're raising the temperature in this hour. Amen. So we lift your name up. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, we need you to put your hands together. It's an audience of one. Come on. Now, this is a familiar song, so we need everybody to sing with us this morning. Come on. Yeah.
to lift them. Somebody celebrate. Oh, somebody put those hands together. We come to lift you, Jesus. We come to lift you, Jesus. Come on, church, right where you are. I think we can raise it up a little bit higher. Come on, church, here we go. Yeah, we're going to take it back. Is that all right? Oh, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Crying, he justified. Breathing forever. One day he's coming back. On the glorious day, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Let 
heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Join to the world. Yeah. Join to the world. Yeah. Join to the world. We sing, we sing. Heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. 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 We sing to the newborn king. We sing to the newborn king. If you can just quickly lift your hands as we give reverence to the Father for his presence this morning, for his glory this morning. The song says, Hallelujah, it is done. The song talks about how Jesus came, as Minister Joseph was saying, he died and he rose. And he lives. That's what the song talks about. But I want you to make this song personal. Because when Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave, he gave you power to defeat the situations and the circumstances that rise up against you. So when we sing this song that it is done, I want you to make a declaration that's personal. That this is done. If he said it, I believe it. If he said it, I walk in it. For the promises of God are yes and amen. So we rest on your promises, Jesus. And we begin to fill this place with your glory, Father. We open up our mouth and begin to saturate this place, Father, so your presence can rest and dwell in this moment, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. And we give you all glory and honor. Yeah. We give you all glory and honor. Give you all glory and honor. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Done. Hallelujah. 
surrender our fields to you, oh God. Hey, yeah. It is done. Is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bow down before you. You are worthy to receive all glory. All honor and power. Don't make it belongs to it is done, yeah. But God has sold the, the whole wide world. He sent His Son to save her, our Lord. If you can open up your mouth and declare, Hallelujah, Jesus. But there is no God like you, no God beside you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is done.
greatest power and his name is Jesus. The word says that demons flee at the name of Jesus. Minds are regulated at the name of Jesus. Souls are saved at the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name, every knee shall bow, yeah. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Yeah, yeah. He is Lord. Yeah. yeah. There's no God like you. There's no God beside you. There is no God like you. Yeah. There is no God beside you, yeah. He is Holy Father. He is the Sovereign Father. I search high and I look low. <laughs> and I couldn't find nobody. He has all power in his hand. He has all power in his hand. Holds the whole world woo, in his hands. He holds the whole world <laughs> in his hands. He holds the whole world in his hands. For you are here. You are here. You are here. You are here. It's real simple. Here. Say, you are here. Say, you are here. You are here. You are Come on, people of God. Here. You are here. You are here. You are here. You are here. He who dwells. In the secret place, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. So we dwell here, and we live here. We rest here. Sing. Well, he said, we want you to abide in us, Jesus. Make this house your home. You can live in me. And you can rest in me. You can abide in me. Just stay right here. Well here, well here, well here, move whatever's in the way, whatever took your place, well Whatever's in your way Ever took your place Dwell here Dwell here Dwell here Move whatever's in your way Ever took your place Your place, 
well here, Father. We're going to build it one good time. Come on, get what you need right here. For whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, to the place where you stand at and just submit and give it to God. There's something that you need and you can't leave this place without releasing that thing to God. He said, cash your cares upon him. He said, surrender all to me in this moment. If you just take this moment and you tap into the presence of God, I'm just going to be honest. The presence of God is here and some of us haven't tapped in yet. And God is waiting on you. He's a patient God. He's a patient God. The word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I know you're waiting on us to sit down and you're waiting on us to move, move on and that's okay. But if you can just tap into the presence of God, because in this moment you can have a quick selfish moment. It's for what you need. If you leave this moment, without getting what you need that lies on your hands but the presence of God is here and the saints have assembled in one accord to worship God so if you have a desire I dare you to lay it at the feet of Jesus in this moment we're only going to be here for a few more moments so take this time and inconvenience how you might be feeling in your body inconvenience how you might be feeling in your mind and press into the presence of God and get what you need from the Lord this is a great exchange in this moment I'm telling you that we stand under an open heaven in this moment and I dare you to release it in the name of Jesus. God, we bless your name and God, we honor you and we bow before you. Yeah. Dwell here. Dwell here. Live here. Live. 
You can abide right here forever and always. Forever and always. Forever and always. We surrender to you. surrender to you. If you could just elevate your voice and let your praise fill this room. We surrender to you. And we lay it all down. For you are worthy, God. <laughs> and you are holy, God. Come on, elevate your voice over the piano, the sound of the instruments. Elevate your voice. If you can just raise the temperature right now. Some of you haven't opened up your mouth yet, and he's patient enough to wait on you. I'm telling you, but if you would just open up your mouth, I see still mouths closed. Open up your mouth, and if you don't know what else to say, I dare you to say, God, you're worthy. God, you're holy. God, you're, I love you enough to not leave this moment until you get what you need. Some of us are looking at the clock, but I'll tell you, God is ready to make a great exchange this morning. For your pain, he's going to give you peace. For your sorrow, he's going to give you joy. But by faith, open up your mouth and declare that he is God. You are worthy, God, yeah. because there was no room in the inn. And because he was, there was no room in the inn, he had to be born outside in a barn. And this song says move because life will put stuff in our, in our path that there will be things that get before him and that there will not be room for him. And the enemy will make us feel like it's important what's before him. But I need to tell you that no matter what it is, if it's your, your relationship, your children, your job, your money, nothing should come before God because he's the keeper of everything. If you really want to keep your mind, if you really want to keep your heart safe, if you really want to guard your life, you have to say, God, I'm anything that gets in the way of you. I got to move it out the way because you have to be one. So if you could, just for a minute, say that with me. Whatever's in the way, whatever, whatever took yours, move whatever's in your way. Come on, that's to the Lord right now. Whatever took your move, move whatever's in your way. Whatever took, whatever took your move. hands before the Lord and say something good about him in this atmosphere. God, we bless you. You are worthy, God. You're number one in my life. Lord, there's nobody like you, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
yes, God, you are my first and my last. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. If you would, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. The gospel, Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. all stand for the reading of the word of God. Matthew chapter 1. I think I'm only going to read one verse. I'm going to read verse 20. Matthew 1 and 20. The word of God says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your spirit. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. Ah. Speak, Father, speak in this house. Remove anything that would hinder your word going forth. But open up our ears, our hearts, our eyes. That this word will fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit. Let not this flesh interfere with what you desire to do. But Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I say, move whatever in the way. Move whatever took your place. Amen. For a little while, I would like to talk to you from the thought, the evidence or a word. The evidence or a word. There are a lot of shows, a lot of movies on TV that I notice a consistent pattern. Uh, tension or drama of the show is always based on some evidence or something that has been interpreted incorrectly. And because of incorrect interpretation or they, things appear to be something that they weren't, the whole show is based upon that drama. Uh, we were, me and my wife were watching a show uh, very recently. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, the Kurt Franklin show. In the Kurt Franklin movie, the show, whatever it was, a movie, it was a one-time show, movie. In that movie, the pastor, this, this, this young lady, was interested in this man. And they seemed to be building a healthy relationship. But one day when she was coming out of the church and talking on the phone to her mom, she looked ahead and saw this young man that she was building a relationship with walking out the store with another woman. Because of that, the next time that he came, he didn't understand it, but she said, I think we're moving too fast. Let's just stop this. I have too much stuff to take care of at the church. And so he didn't get it, but she was ending what seemed to be building before it could get there based on what she saw. What happened later in the movie is when she finally was able to let him speak a word, somebody say a word, he came to the door and said, I want you to meet my sister. She looked and the evidence was true. He was with another woman. He did have his arm on her, but what she didn't know was it was just his sister. This whole dramatization was built up on the fact that he interpreted, she interpreted the evidence incorrectly. In our text today, Matthew 1 and 20, it opens up and it says, but while he thought on these things, here we have Joseph, Joseph, Joseph of the line of David, 
who is engaged, betrothed to a woman by the name of Mary. We know the story well. Uh, they have plans on getting married. Uh, in these plans on getting married, the Joseph, in this text, Joseph finds himself in a deep sleep because the woman that he is planning on getting married to, he finds out that she is pregnant. She tells him that she is pregnant. He's, he's pre she's pregnant. And the, the problem is, is that Joseph knows she's pregnant, but one thing Joseph knows is he's not the father. Now, this is a, ch a challenging situation because the woman that he loves, that he is engaged to, is pregnant by someone else. And Joseph is struggling now because he's like, how could this be when I'm not the father? In Jewish time, in Jewish culture at this time, I believe we said this before, once you were engaged, it was a legal binding contract. And so engagement was taken just as serious as marriage, and it was con just as contractual as marriage was in this time. What is challenging to this situation, and the Mosaic law says that if a woman is pregnant by someone other than her husband, she has committed adultery, this woman can be stoned to death. So now Joseph finds himself engaged to a woman, about to marry a woman that could be stoned to death. Uh, Joseph finds himself in the difficult situation. This verse, in the 20th verse of Matthew, the first chapter, uh, finds Joseph in this place where he's, it paints the picture of Joseph laying there. And it says, Joseph, uh, while he thought on these things, Joseph is laying, I could imagine how I vision him, is Joseph laying there on his um, on pop, pop, uh, the, uh, very comfort mattress. You know, they had a, a top of the line, a poly, posturepedic mattress. <laughs> Joseph laying on his posturepedic mattress and laying there trying to decide, what do I do? Because Joseph, who the Bible lets us know, is a very upright, godly man, is willing to follow the law, which means his, his the woman he's engaged to could be put to death, but Joseph is pondering because something doesn't look right. This woman that Joseph is about to marry has all the evidence to lead him to a choice to end his engagement. But Joseph finds himself in a struggle because he knows her character. Joseph knows Mary to be a virgin, but she's pregnant. He knows to be Mary a person with a strong relationship with God, but she's pregnant. He knows her to be committed to the laws of God and of high integrity, but she's pregnant. I would like to suggest to you that this is what happens when what we see is impacted by what we can't see. The facts will not always make sense. Whenever the natural is met up with the supernatural, things will not be as they appear, and you will find yourself asking the question, what is going on here? Have you ever been in a place where things just didn't make sense? You know what you see, you know what you were told, you know what, what somebody uh, showed you, but it really don't add up and it don't make sense. Joseph was looking at this thing and like, this just doesn't, this is Mary. I just didn't haphazardly pick someone. I had the same taste as the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, I picked Mary. But something's not adding up with this woman I chose, Ephesians 6 and 12. Let us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Paul was letting us know in this text that guess what? There is activity going on that we see, but there is also activity going on that we don't see. And when the activity that we don't see begins to impact what we see, only way you can really know what's going on is if God gives you a word. Second Kings chapter 6, there was a young man that woke to, he was with the prophet Elisha, and he awoke to being surrounded by a great army and horses of chariots. And because of this, this man was gripped with fear. And he went to Elijah the prophet, and he said to Elisha, 
uh, what are we going to do? Uh, but Elisha, the man that he went to, was not walking in fear. Elisha, the man that he went to, was not concerned nor worried. The Elijah, the man that he went to, was not in a panic mode because Elijah knew that there was something more than what could be seen. Elisha went to God and said, God, open up his eyes that he may see. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open up his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened up the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Uh, whenever the natural collides with the supernatural, the truth is you need to have divine access in order to be able to see what's going on to make the proper steps. Uh, it's literally impossible to move accurately in all situations without being able to see in the Spirit or hear in the Spirit or be given divine understanding in the Spirit. Because too often we base how we move and what we do on the natural, only on what we see, only on what it looks like. But what you have to get a grip on is that even though it looks like a catastrophe, even though it looks like somebody just messed up, even though it looks like somebody just attacked you, maybe it's nobody but the devil coming after you. Maybe it's the devil trying to destroy your mind. Maybe it's the devil trying, and if God does not open you up to see, you will think you're standing alone, but God will show you that, no, there's an army standing around you that's guarding your back. Is there anybody that know God got your back? Somebody in the house needs to know your situation is not what it looks like. I know naturally the picture has been painted and it's been drawn and complete, but you need to know there's a supernatural dealing with your natural and even though the natural says one thing, you need to know God's not through yet. Is there anybody glad God's not through yet? Um, it looked like the, that Elisha and the, and the man of God were outnumbered, but the prophet let him know it's not what it looks like. There's more standing for us than against us. Somebody needs to know even though the devil thought he knocked you out, even though he tried to steal your joy, even though he tried to attack your peace and come against your life, you need to know right now that there's more for you than against you. And that even though the enemy caves what God is doing, you're going to get the victory. Do I got anybody victorious in the house? Then you ought to give God a victorious praise. In this verse in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, the second part, and I'm almost done. I'm halfway through the verse. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Right here in this text, in this catastrophic natural situation, where the woman he is engaged to finds herself in this very difficult predicament, Joseph is given a divine revelation in the midst of a dream, I could see Joseph, I told you he was laying there pondering. The word says thinking. The word uh, in the, in the uh, Greek means pondering, which means he was thinking about this, uh, going through, pondering this, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, in the middle of this, Joseph falls asleep, uh, laying, with the, laying there with this thing heavy on his mind, can't shake it. Joseph falls asleep. While he's asleep, the Spirit of the Lord sends an angel down and begins to share something with him and gives him a divine revelation of something. And it lets him know that this thing that has happened to you was done by the Holy Ghost. Uh, that you need to go ahead and go forth with your plans. I know people ain't going to understand it. Uh, people aren't going to believe it. But I don't need you to worry about what people believe. I'm giving you a word in the midst of your catastrophic situation. That even though the evidence says one thing, I am still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you need to know that I'm in control of this thing. And so I want you to get this divine understanding that your natural has been impacted by the supernatural. So Joseph had to make a decision right there. Even though this was a dream that he had, he had to decide, am I going to believe what I felt, what I heard in my dream? Or am I going to move by what I saw when I was awoke? Uh, but what he knew was that in his relationship with God, what had been spoken to him in the dream 
was a divine revelation given to him by God that was going to pack his walk and order his steps when he was awoke. He was then able to move not based on evidence, but he was able to move based on a word. Uh, he could not see it. Uh, he could not see what happened. But he had to believe God that what he said was true, and that is what went on. Joseph had to make the decision, am I going to believe the evidence, or am I going to believe the report of the Lord? Am I going to walk by what I see and do by what people are telling me, or am I going to walk by faith and believe that God is able to do what no other power can do? Joseph was asked a very difficult question. Are you going to believe that a woman got pregnant and, a, and no man had nothing to do with it? Are you going to be able to go back and tell your family that a woman got pregnant and a man had nothing to do with it? Are you going to disobey the customs of the law and go against tradition? Are you going to go against the majority but stand strong on the word of God and believe God will do just what he said? Joseph was not caught up in evidence nor was he ready to believe just what he saw. But Joseph was able to move by faith, knowing that what God said he had done, it was already done. Joseph might not have been able to see it, but because God said it, Joseph had to walk in this thing for nine months. Joseph had to believe the report of the Lord uh, and had to walk by faith and not by sight. Do I got anybody in the house today that found out that every now and then you got to be like Joseph and walk by faith and not by sight? It might not always look like you thought it would look. You might not always get the news that you wanted to get. But how many know that you got to learn to trust in the Lord and lean not into thine own understanding? The Bible says in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Moses, I mean, jo uh, Joseph knew uh, that if he was going to walk this thing out, he had to believe the report of the Lord. Once God speaks, uh, you got to learn to trust what God has to say. Uh, once God speaks, uh, you got to learn to move by faith and not by sight. As we walk into this Christmas season, uh, we need to be reminded that God still does miracles. As we walk into this Christmas season, we need that God still is a supernatural God that does things that no other power can do. That even when the lawyer says there's no hope, how many know that God still can work it out? Even when the doctor gives you a bad report, how many can know that God can still work it out? Even when the marriage counselor gives you bad news, uh, how many know God can still work it out? Even when your children are struggling, uh, how many know God can still work it out? Even if you're about to lose your mind, uh, how many know God can still work it out? Uh, don't go by what you hear. Uh, the majority will always walk uh, by sight. Uh, but do I got anybody in the house uh, that's ready to walk by faith? Uh, Knowing that because I serve the great I am, uh, I can call on those things that are not uh, as though they are. Uh, because I serve the great I am, uh, I can walk by faith uh, even in the shadow of death. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, if you know God is able uh, to do the impossible, uh, you ought to give God uh, a big hand clap of praise uh, and shout glory. Hallelujah. In Numbers, the 13th chapter, uh, Moses sends out 12 men to spy on the land of Canaan. Uh, when the midst of spying on the land, they come back with a report. Uh, Moses, the land is just as fruitful as you thought. Matter of fact, the grapes were so big that it took two people just to carry some grapes back to the camp. He said, but Moses, I looked at the land, and the evidence says that we need to leave this land alone. The evidence says that this is too big for us to handle. The evidence is true that the people in the land are strong and very great. The evidence is true 
that the cities is walled up with big walls on every side. The evidence is true uh, that the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The evidence is true uh, that up in the mountains you have Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites. Uh, the, 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 uh, the evidence is true uh, that the land even eats up the, uh, the enemies, uh, that it will eat up the people, that the land is too rough for us. The evidence is true that there are giants in the land, men of great stature. But there was two other people, Joshua and Caleb, that says even though the evidence is true, uh, they said, Moses, we need to go and take the land. Uh, because the word of the Lord says uh, that he gave it to our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so they came and said in Numbers 14, in verse 9, uh, Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Uh, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not, uh, even though it looks like... Uh, all the evidence was against them. Um, what Joshua and Caleb knew um, is they had a word from the Lord. Um, I need to let you know that it doesn't matter what it looks like. But if God speaks a word, um, how many know that everything got to line up? Um, it doesn't matter um, what it looks like. When God speaks the word, um, the sun will have to stand still. Um, when God speaks a word, um, the water will stand up like walls up on both sides up. When God speaks a word up, lame people get up and walk up. When God speaks a word up, deaf people have their ears open up. When God speaks a word up, dead people get up out of graves up. When God speaks a word up, wounded people are made whole up. When God speaks a word up, two fish can feed 5,000 up with five loaves of bread up. When God speaks a word up, even if lions are defeated by warriors up. When God speaks a word up, a lion that's supposed to eat up will become your pillow at night up. When God speaks a word up, a fire that's supposed to burn you up up will be what frees you from bondage up. When God speaks a word up, those that think they're going to destroy you up will become your stepping stone. Um, I don't know about you, um, but I can't walk by faith. Um, I can't afford to trust what I see. Um, I can't afford to trust what folk tell me. Um, but I do believe um, the word of the Lord. Um, I do believe um, God never fails. Uh, I do believe uh, his word got power. Uh, I do believe uh, he's right on time. Uh, do I got anybody that believe the report uh, of the Lord? Uh, you ought to give God a praise. Isaiah said, who's going to believe the report of the Lord? To whom the arm, the arm of the Lord is revealed. See, in this Christmas season, I want you to be like Joseph. And when things don't make sense, go and start pondering and ask God what's going on. Because the enemy will try to paint a bad picture. But Joseph found out that it wasn't what it looked like. That God was in control the whole time. And even though the evidence was against them, Joseph was able to walk by faith. Somebody shout, walk by faith. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. What I want you to catch from this today, don't, don't walk by evidence. Don't trust what you see. Even courts will say people will, they can't even trust what people, eyewitnesses say sometimes. They can't trust what eyewitnesses see sometimes. I know it don't always look good. I know it don't look good. And what you see might be true. Joseph had some facts. Elisha had facts. That man had facts. Here are these 10 spies with the negative report. They stated facts. But the facts don't matter when God gives a word. It don't matter. It don't matter that, that it's all looking gloom and doom. What does God have to say? What was it, Elijah? Hezekiah? The fact was he was told to come get your house in order. 
The prophet said, Elijah, you, I mean, uh, Hezekiah, you're about to die. Get your house in order. But before the prophet could get out, God, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He said, I just need, Hezekiah knew, I just need a word from the Lord. I, I know what the evidence says, and I know what God already spoke, but if God will give a word that I'm healed, even though I was told to get my house in order, if I could just get a word, every, all the evidence will be changed, it will be null and void. He turned his face to the wall, and guess what? God gave a word. A word will override your evidence. We are the household of God. It don't matter what it looks like. That's why when stuff going, we say pray. We don't say pray because it sounds good. And I don't believe in telling people stuff that ain't praying for me. I don't give out information to give it. I give it to, you know what you do? You watch people that just pray and worship and praise because then the people that really will get before God. And when something go on, they take your situation as serious as theirs. Because if we could ever get to God and we go to him and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. How many know that God is able to turn it around no matter what it looks like? Don't go by what you see. Ask God for a word. Ask him for favor. Ask him for mercy. But don't let the flesh dictate how we walk. If I would have just walked by sight, there's so many things I would have never done and so many times I would have stopped. But I was able to hold on to what God said. Sometimes I have to remind myself. I still got, I still got things written down, the God, words that God spoke to me in the 90s. Because I have to remind myself what God said. And no, guess what? The word don't die. That's one way you can tell if stuff is, is, is true. When you, when you saving words that God been speaking all your life and somebody come with a strange word, you be like, where are you coming from? That ain't even in alignment. Now, unless you're out there sinning and you know God had to check you. But when you're on the path, God began to speak words and stuff line up. A word from 1995 lining up with a word from 2016, that's God. But all we need is a word. That's why we come to church. That's why we worship. We worship to get our minds free from all that other stuff, focus on God, lift him up high so that we can hear clearly. Because God is speaking the house. He'll speak in the worship service and the songs and exhortation. He'll speak during, the, speak during the sermon. He'll speak. How many believe God still speaks a word? <laughs> Joseph was able to do a very hard thing because God gave a word. What a mighty God we serve. Shall we all stand? My prayer is this, that you will always seek God for the supernatural. Not to walk, walk around here like, woo, woo, woo. I'm not, I mean, but supernatural meaning God to get to you in a way that you can receive it. Because some of us receive differently. But God would speak to you in a way that you know that had to be God. If he could show you something in a way that you could receive to know that that had to be God. If he could give you some divine understanding so you can have clarity so that you can know that had to be God. Father, we thank you for the relationship. We're grateful, Father, that we have a relationship with you. In our relationship, not only do we pray, not only do we worship and exalt your name, not only do we call on you, but God, you speak to us. I pray now, Father, that we would have ears to hear you. Open up our ears to hear you and to know your voice. Your words as a stranger, we will not follow. Help us, Father, to follow you, to, to be able to hear you. 
that you can order our steps, which means if you're ordering our steps, there's some direction that you're giving to us, God. We pray, God, that we would have ears, eyes, hearts that are open to receive direction from you, that as we journey through this life, that we will not walk by sight, we will not get caught up in what things appear to be, we will not be tricked, derailed by the enemy, but help us, Father, to walk by faith. We want to walk by faith. We want to trust you. You are a real God. You're not some abstract figure that does not speak to us and relate with us. But God, you are a real living God, the God. You're the one that is alive. We thank you for your voice. Give us ears to hear you. You say, your sheep know your voice. Give us ears to hear you. Give us ears. Give us eyes that see you. Light up like a baby lights up when they see their parents. Give us hearts, Father, that are willing to let you speak, whether it's through a dream, through a word, through revelation. But let us be open to you. And help us know the voice of the enemy to turn it off. We thank you. Thank you for each and every one in this house, God. And I pray, God, that as we continue walking, that we will allow you to order our steps and guide our paths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Maybe there's someone that needs to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If so, we want to invite you right now. It's not something you want to miss. What great Christmas present and great Christmas season, this great Christmas season. If there's someone that needs to make that decision, we'd like to welcome you right now. Is there one? If not, is there someone that needs a church home? We'd love to welcome you into the house right now. We just ask that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If not, let's give God a big hand clap of praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We thank God for all that he is doing. Amen. I'm grateful to see another uh, Christmas season. Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready for the ministry of giving. Amen. So we're going to ask that if everyone would just get there. Uh, as they get their offering ready, and remember, for offering as we move around, we want masks on, so please get prepared. Uh, we thank God for what he has done. Offering, giving is a blessing. Uh, we do that. We know that because that's why we give gifts. And even everybody here, how many love gifts? Because it's a blessing to get a gift. Uh, when somebody gives you something, you say, oh, wow, you thought about me. That's what you think somebody actually thought about you. Uh, God wants us to think about him. He wants us to show him that kind of love where we bring a gift unto him. The thing about his gifts is that he says when you do it, he's going to bless you more than you even gave unto him. He says you can't outgive him. <clears throat> you can't outdo him. He just wants you to do your best to show that you love him in your giving, which means we want to give unto God because we love him. It's an act of love. So I'm asking you today that as God has blessed you, as God has prospered you, let's give unto the Lord because we love him. And, and it's not how much you give. It's giving your best. If a person got a job making six figures, 100,000, and you got a job making 20, just because they give a bigger amount than you does not mean God does not see your gift as equal to theirs. He sees your gift based on what you make. He said, Pastor, I really ain't got much of a job. I, ain't got, I said, well, you're eating somewhere. Ain't nobody starving. You're getting a food stamp. You're getting a, a gift basket. you at the mission. you doing something. You got clothes on your back. Nobody walking here barefooted. Which means we can give God something. Amen. We can give God something. And that's what we want to do, give God something.
because there's a blessing in it. Father, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you for each and every person, Father, in this house who's sowing by faith, God, knowing that you have been good to us. And because of our love towards you, we want to give to you, not grudgingly or out of necessity, but because we just love you. We ask you to bless this offering, bless each and every gift, each and every giver, that that which is given will be used for the furtherance of thy kingdom. We ask this in your son Jesus' name, in him we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. <clears throat> we ask that um, everyone in the house will please stand. Everyone in the house will please stand. As you stand, the ushers are going to begin to usher you out. If sections one or two, if you face each other, you're going to come down here. Uh, these two sections face each other. And Sister Jerry will usher you down this aisle. If you're going to give with Cash App or Givelify, the information is on the board, dollar sign RCF 760. And the Givelify app, if you have that, you can use that also. Amen. At this time, you're in the hands of our ushers. Please wear your mask as you walk around. Please wear your mask as you walk around, everyone. give one announcement that we can go off the air is that um, our Christmas production will premiere on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, we, we, uh, we changed the time instead of tonight. We're going to be doing it on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. Somebody say 8 p.m. on Facebook Live. So I'm asking you to join us on Facebook this, when is Christmas Eve? Friday. I had to think, when is Christmas Eve? Friday at 8 p.m. And let's watch our uh, Christmas production for the year. It'll be a good way to go into Christmas Eve. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for all those viewing. Thank you for viewing with us. And we look forward to seeing you uh, Friday night on our live viewing for Christmas Eve. May God bless you. May heaven shine upon you. Amen. For those of you in the house, amen. God bless you. Good to see you. <laughs>